All right, guys, it is time, story time with Uncle Sneed. Let me zoom in a little bit here, and I'm going to get rid of me for a moment. I want to share some stuff with you all that you can find on my Twitter page, a.k.a. X, I guess. All right, this is from August 3rd, which would have been last week. All right, this, folks, is a speed test on the AT&T network. All right, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. This speed test was taking on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. I've got a bunch of SIM profiles on that phone. Uh, this test was taking, taken at an AT&T cell site. I don't remember which one it was. I don't think it really matters. But this speed test was taken at 6 p.m. I would consider that to be a peak time. You got people getting off of work. You got people all up on social media, right? TikTok, Snapchat, Kiki, do you love me? You know, uh, you got people on YouTube. You got all types of video consumption. So data usage is high at this time. This is peak in my opinion, right? From like six to nine or something, probably peak. This speed test shows the 80 megahertz C-band configuration for AT&T. 629 down, 103 on the up. Now you can see the signal strength is really, it's really good, right? We got a full signal, it's all bars, 5G plus, so you know we're on either C-band or DOD or millimeter wave. I can tell you guys right now, this is 80 megahertz of C-band. All right, you got 49 ping, you got seven jitter. The download and, and upload latencies are pretty good. But here's why I'm impressed, folks. AT&T went from a 40 megahertz to an 80 megahertz channel of C-band. Typically, sites were like performing 250, 300 megabits per second. When they went to 80, the throughput doubled, right? It's just simple math. Double the bandwidth, you get double the speed. As long as the backhaul is there. So what I'm thinking is... This is probably a one gig circuit, right? I think it's a one gig circuit. What I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start going to some of these sites really early in the morning or really late at night to do some testing to see how it performs when the usage on the network is much lower than peak. Because I wanna see what like, what's the, 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 the max performance of the site, you know, off peak and on peak, right? So I'm gonna go back, I wanna test some sites Test them at like 6 in the morning, test them at 6 in the evening, and then maybe late at night. So hopefully maybe like a, my home cell or a neighboring cell so it's close. Uh, so so the performance there, the spectral efficiency is pretty good for a 1 gig circuit. Now if AT&T was to boost this to a 10 gig circuit, which they can do, that's what's crazy, guys, is they're going to have to go back to the site and upgrade the fiber so that they can get more throughput. And I don't think they want to wait too long because, you know, they're leaving a lot of capacity out on the table. This site could be 80 megahertz of C-band plus 40 megahertz of DoD. That's 120 megahertz of N77. So they probably want to do that as they launch their SA core on a national scale. The last thing I'll say about the speed test is the uplink. Folks, 103 megabits per second uplink. AT&T was notoriously the worst uplink in the city. I'm not exaggerating, people. Not at all. All right, I'm going to just put me over here to the side. All right, previously, AT&T uplinks were like 10 megabits, 20 megabits, 30 megabits. A 40 or 50 megabit speed test on AT&T was like, it was like finding a needle in the haystack. It was so hard to come by. Not anymore. This is the first time I have ever seen AT&T get a speed test over 50 megabits and not only is it over 50, but it's over a hundred megabits and this is all due to C-band So I just want to say this about the AT&T network Today in the CLE It is a phenomenal network folks It is very modern It was completely overhauled a few years ago with the whole like first net band 14 upgrades so it was really modernized at that time over the last, you know, 2018, 2019, even through 2020 as they were upgrading. 
Now it got even better with more capacity with DOD and, and C-band radio gear, antennas and radios. All that's really left for them to do is go back to these sites, upgrade the fiber circuits, and I think, you know, kind of get the, the DOD aggregating with the C-band on all the newest devices. And this network is pound for pound the best in the CLE. I'm not, this is not hyperbole. By doubling the bandwidth from 40 to 80 megahertz, AT&T became, at least for one week, <laughs> for one week, it was like the best network in Cleveland. And and don't get me wrong, they're not the fastest network in Cleveland. The fastest network in Cleveland is probably T-Mobile still. Because every single tower site in Cleveland has N41 at 140 or 160 megahertz of bandwidth. That's hard to beat. A lot of T-Mobile sites are starting to get 10 gig fiber circuits. So with respect to that, I got to call a spade a spade. The T-Mobile network is really fast. But what AT&T just did by getting their 80 megahertz of C-band is they made their network basically as fast as T-Mobile. The one thing that separates AT&T from T-Mobile is the fact that AT&T is a much more reliable network. When you look at the root metric scores, when you look at you know the reliability segments, AT&T is very very reliable. They've got backup power on all their sites. They've got really solid network configurations. Now with the additional bandwidth, they've solved their uplink problems. Now with the additional bandwidth, they've made their downlink basically bulletproof. Folks, AT&T is not scaling fixed wireless access. This type of performance is what AT&T is going to do in a lot of places. 600 megabits per second down, 100 megabits per second up. The network is going to be very good for a lot of people, especially in places where the tower grid is tight. And they've got nice overlap and clusters of cells. We know they do fiber, right? Now they're putting bandwidth on air. They're getting modern. My only concern is that AT&T is going to play it safe with their spending. You know, when I look at AT&T, they really hit the ground running last year and started moving fast, and then they fizzled towards the end of the year. Then they reaccelerated a little bit at the start of this year, and then all the commentary about AT&T, about C-band and spending, was going to be that they were going to kind of temper it down a little bit. And that got people scared like they weren't going to continue to invest in the network. I think what's happening with AT&T is they're not just not going to willy-nilly upgrade a site that doesn't have a lot of traffic on it. If they upgraded the site in 2020 and the site's getting 250, 300 megabits on low band 5G and 5GE and all that stuff, they're not going to rush to upgrade the site. They'll get to it. They they want to put all their hardware and spectrum to good use. They're just going to be more calculated with the upgrade process because, guys, they have spent $22, $21, $22 dollars annually for the last three years. And a lot of it's been fiber and a lot of it's been modernization with FirstNet. And, you know, the, investors are putting pressure on Big Blue and the Death Star. Right? So I, for one, am really happy with the outcome that Cleveland as a market got from at and I'm very happy about this. I hope a lot of you get to see these same types of you know performances and experiences. But man, for the last week that I've been heavily testing at and it has been absolutely tremendous. Very clean network experience. Not jittery, not unstable, very fast and snappy. The uplink problem has been solved. Additional downlink throughput is provided. It's been really good. For one week, AT&T was faster than Verizon. <laughs> there are different ways that you can support the SMT. One of them, obviously, is to rate the video. That helps. You interact with the content, you know, comments and likes and shares and those things. Uh, but if you want to be more directly supportive of your content creators, the way that you do that is with supports like the buy me a coffee link uh, you can support us that way there's also the other you know donation type supports really what i want to do is grow the communities within patreon 
and the YouTube memberships and, and more so the Patreon because I can give you more through Patreon. So if you guys like what the YouTube channel does and you like what it offers, you're looking for a bunch of things like early access videos and additional live streams. You want more of the SMT? That's how you could do it. So I recommend checking us out on Patreon. The link is in the description. But if you don't want to do that, then you can support us lots of other ways. In the description, you've got the coffee link. You've got other stuff. There's ways to support the channel. Of course, if you need service, but you want a good value, you're sick and tired of price hikes, you're looking for a better deal, we have partnered with Mint Mobile. All right, Use our partner link. It's in the description. They just increased all of the data allotments on all their plans. And they didn't touch pricing. So the 4 gig plan went to a 5 gig plan. They kept it 15 bucks. The 15 gig plan, right, used to be a 10 gig plan, right? And they kept it at $20 a month, right? So they added all this value, didn't even touch pricing. This is why we absolutely must support this company. They are doing good things. I mean, you tell me what carrier is doing this. What carrier gives you more for the same amount of money, right? All these other companies are raising pricing. T-Mobile just increased plan rates, right? Their new plans are more expensive. Verizon is historically known, AT&T historically known for slapping on increases to fees and additional fees and all those types of things. Mint Mobile's different. They're different. They're giving you more and they're not charging you more, right? So if you're looking for a second line, you want to try the T-Mobile network, you know, that you're looking for a better value, there are... I can think of a dozen reasons to switch to Mint Mobile. And of course, you can port your number. You can get, you know, phone deals. They'll, they'll like, look at this. Look at this one. It's here at the top, right? We're talking about six months of free service when you buy a phone and get their six month plan. So you would essentially have a year of service and a phone all on a good deal. Can't beat it. All right. Links in the description. Use it. It's our unique uh, partner link uh, and it, it will support the channel.